afternoon everyone and welcome to today's event inspiring women my name is rachel from natwest business banking and this event is in collaboration with the Leeds city region enterprise partnership otherwise known as the lep and the huddersfield giants as a bank we recognize the importance of supporting women in business and today you will hear from the inspirational story of huddersfield born mum of four claire o'connor who founded the multi-award winning preschool dance company baby ballet Claire will be interviewed by Earl Crabtree, who is ambassador for Huddersfield Giants. And prior to this, we'll be chatting to Earl around the success of the Women in Business Network, which was launched in 2019. As Huddersfield Giants recognised that a third of their fan base were female and that there were very few women in business events in Kirklees. My colleague Heather Waters, who is on the screen today with us, will also be talking to you today around the free mentoring programme that NatWest are offering. This is in partnership with Be The Business, available for female SME leaders in the Leeds City region. We will also hear from Lorna Holroyd and Jane Green from the LEP around their business support service, where you can benefit from one-to-one -one tailored advice, funding, training, events and support networks. Finally, you'll have the chance to hear how to learn how to deliver the perfect 60 second pitch from Nick McCafferty, who is our Entrepreneur Acceleration Manager at the NatWest Hub in Leeds. There will be opportunity for some Q&A for all our panellists, um, so please write any questions in the chat box. So before we get into today's, today's jam-packed agenda, I'll give you a little bit of background about myself and the role I do. So I've worked for the bank for 14 years now, started out in personal banking, and around two years ago I moved to business banking. So as a business growth enabler in the Leeds City region, it's my job to help and support businesses to grow. And we do this in several ways. One of the ways is to offer free events and workshops like the one we're doing today, albeit the virtual at the moment. But this, these are great for numerous reasons. So the Great Tabusha Network can meet like-minded business owners, which is vital in business. The content of the event provides practical business support from a range of topics from cash flow to digital marketing, well-being and many, many more. We also partner with key organisations um, such as the Huddersfield Giants, accountancy firms and the public sector, sectors like the LEPs, Chambers, universities, all to work together to deliver events so you can take away the expertise, knowledge and discover all the support that's on offer out there. I'm also the link to the bank's products and services that we offer, so it's my job to connect you to the right department at the right time, whether it's regarding bank accounts, meeting business managers, funding options and, and so on. So why is NatWest committed to supporting women in business? So Alison Rose, uh, sorry, the Rose Review was launched in March 2019 by uh, Alison Rose, who is our CEO, at the request of the UK government. The review sets out to identify the disparity between male and female entrepreneurs when starting and scaling their business and the barriers that women face. Alison has said that this resulted in unrealised potential for the UK economy. So advancing on female entrepreneurship represents a £250 billion opportunity for UK economy. As a result of these findings, NatWest have set up several initiatives so far, one of which my colleague Heather Waters is now going to discuss in more depth. Um, so Heather, with that, I'll hand over to you. That's great. That Thank you so much, Rachel. So as it says, my name's Heather Waters. I work for NatWest. I'm a National Women in Business Manager. And Eroika, if you could just put the first slide up for me, please. So um, as Rachel mentioned, um, the Rose Review was launched on the International Women's Day in 2019 and it identified three, sorry, five key challenges or barriers that influence women's ability to start and scale a business relative to men. And these are detailed on the screen, as you can see. So the first one is all around capital, awareness and access to it. And actually all women, we kind of, we talk to them they start with roughly 50% of the money that a man would start a business with. So we're underfunded from day one. Greater risk awareness too. This is not about being risk averse. It's actually just been a bit more aware of risk. And actually a lot of women cite this as a reason why they don't want to go into business or they do, certainly don't grow their business. The third one, perceived miss, miss skills and experience. This is very much where the imposter syndrome comes into. Have I got the right skills to do this? Can I do this? Women's confidence or lack of confidence in their own abilities is cited as a key uh, barrier for them growing their business. The next point, this really came to life this year with the COVID impact, disproportionate primary care responsibilities. Um, I hosted a series of roundtables across the UK in the summer. And when we spoke to women um, business owners regarding care responsibilities and how they managed through COVID with their businesses, the real struggle they had was actually with their responsibility for their family. 
So not only were they educating their children while trying to run the business from home, but they'd had other responsibilities. Some women, you know, were looking after elderly parents, other family relatives as well. So that one really kind of drove home an awful lot this year. And the last one, and what I'm going to talk about mainly to you now, is about the lack of relatable sponsorship, mentoring and role models. And women highlighted this. And I guess it's like, who do they know who are entrepreneurial? Who do they know who will support them? Um, one of the things we're looking to do, and we actually launched it as a pilot on the 27th of October, is launch a mentoring program. And we're delighted um, that we've actually got into partnership with Be The Business, who are a national organisation, and using their mentoring platform for female entrepreneurs. Aroiki, could you just put the next slide on, please? So as I've stated, one of the key barriers women identified was a lack of relatable sponsorship, mentorship and role models. So to address this, we launched the platform. This is a free to use mentoring service. We're working at the moment with a 12 week pilot. Um, so you go on, you register yourself. It's all very simple, very easy to use. And you actually go and find your mentor yourself. So if any of you are familiar with Tinder, it works just like that. You put your profile in, put all the details of what actually your business is doing and actually where you think you could do with some help, some support, someone to go and talk to about your business. And then you swipe and find the mentor that you actually want to work with and you send an invitation to them. It's as simple as that. So we um, put the link out on the Eventbrite already that was in the um, details you've already had through. And we will send the link out again tomorrow because it's a particular link to the female mentoring platform that we're working with Be The Business on. So we will get those back out to you tomorrow. Please do take part in this. We've had a massive success of women already going forward and actually filling the um, pro forma in and actually starting to look for a mentor. As I say, it's on a pilot at the moment. It's only Leeds City Region and another area in the west of England that's actually taking part in this um, programme at this moment in time. So we really want to make it a huge success and actually learn from your experience about gaining a mentor and see how it can help you to start and scale your business. As Rachel said, we've got lots of guests speaking today and there's a facility for you to ask questions. We'll have a Q&A session at the very end. So please do at any point, if you've got any questions for any of the speakers, pop it on there and we'll go through them towards the end of the event. So I'm now going to bring in Earl Crabtree from Huddersfield Giants and just have a conversation about their programme because... I work in women in business, have done for many years, and I'd never come across a rugby league team who actually did women in business. So when I was organising um, this event for today and I was doing some work in Leeds around the mentoring programme, I kept getting told, oh, you must speak to Earl. Oh, have you met Earl from Huddersfield Giants yet? This living legend of a man who's actually doing all this activity. So I finally did get to meet him and I just, I'm absolutely blown away because um, I am a rugby mum, as I spoke to you, Earl. Rugby means yeah. to me, um, a and E, broken bones, and don't bring the kit home. <laughs> so that's as far as rugby is concerned. That's the only side I ever see of it. So I'm absolutely, um, totally impressed that a rugby club have actually taken this on board because I don't know any other ones across the UK are doing this. So give us a little bit of background as to how this came about. First of all, I say thank you, thank you very much for the the warm introduction. And um, obviously, now you are a part of the rugby league family, the RL family. This goes beyond being just a rugby player, a rugby team, or a club. We expand beyond that, and this is what's really important for us. Women in business is something that Andrew Watson, our commercial director, fought up originally. Over a third of our fan base are actually female, and we recognise this and realise with it being a family sport that maybe we need to focus on this a little bit more. We have supportive families, including myself. You know, it's my mum that actually got me into, into rugby league uh, with my friends. And uh, I remember looking back at those days, I had the utmost respect for my mum for being that person that actually brought me into it. But from there, we sort of go into a, a man's world or we have been into a man's world. Over time, that's changed. And we realise as a sport that needs to change as well. So much so that the Rugby League World Cup is being held in the UK in 2021. It's the first World Cup that will have women's teams, men's teams and disability teams playing in the same event on the same days and actually in the same competition rather than spreading different ones. We are the first club to do that, the first sport to do that. This is massive for us. So Women in Business set up by Andrew Watson. It was a way of networking, inspiring women in business to come through. And uh, Andrew has daughters himself. I've got a daughter myself as well. We realise the importance of this and having role models. We have role models in rugby league. I've always looked up to different players. We need to expand on this from a family point of view. 
Now, we did this in our first event. We expected, as the Giants normally do for a networking event, only 35 to 40 people. It was a snowy day in the end of the stadium. Um, we, I nearly had to go and pick up the guest speaker in my pickup truck. It nearly didn't happen. But we had 70 women turn up that day. So I actually hosted that event. It was fantastic. In fact, we went from there. We had to move it to the other side of the stadium because we had 100 plus in the next one. This went up to 150. We capped one at 160 at the Manor House. We realise the importance and it's just grown from strength to strength. Times have changed though. This year is a little bit different and we're adapting and that's exactly what we're doing here today. No, it's brilliant. It's great to hear. And the numbers you've, you know, you've got coming to your events. And I know you've got some great partnerships with, um, is it Huddersfield College you work with and also with the Chamber of Commerce at West Yorkshire as well. So it, it's fantastic what you've achieved in such a short space of time, a number of people coming to your events. And that only echoes into the fantastic speaker you brought along today. So I will move out of the way and we'll bring Claire in. I'll let you introduce her and um, I'll speak to you at the end of the interview. Thanks, Phil. Hello, Claire. Now we have to unmute Claire, although... Can you hear me okay? There we go. There she is. Are we good? Like yeah, we're great. I'm just, you know, it's fantastic <laughs> to see you now. Um, me and Claire go way back, and I probably met you the first time, uh, probably when I was about 18 years old. But big news this weekend. You've actually become a great auntie. You must feel really old. I really do, Grandad. <laughs> so there you go, the relationship there. Through my daughter, actually, through marriage, I became a granddad this weekend at the grand old age of 38, which makes you... A great answer, but we've got smiles on our faces and we're really happy. But let me make the introduction to Claire O'Connor, who's my guest speaker today, telling her inspirational story. Welcome on board with us today, Claire. Thank you for turning up and speaking. Lovely background you've got there. Quite obviously, you've been doing this quite recently, haven't you? <laughs> yeah, no, congratulations. Obviously, we oh, are over, over the moon um, and some positive, lovely news for, for us as a family, which is which is wonderful. No, thank you for inviting me. Um, yeah, it's um, it's been a tough year for a lot of people and we've certainly had many challenges to go through. Um, so it'll be kind of really nice to be able to um, chat to you more about that and, you know, Thank you for asking me to give a bit of background on my story. And the main, the main reason for me being here is hopefully to um, give some confidence to people in the audience. Um, I didn't have a clue when I started my business what I was doing. I didn't know how to go about it. So hopefully at the end of this, that's what we'll have achieved with the audience that have joined us today. So thank you for having me and, and hi to everybody out there. <laughs> Fantastic. So I'd like to just take this opportunity to thank a few people before we go any further. Thank you, first of all, to NatWest for making this actually happen, getting in touch with me and making sure that we do have this opportunity to inspire women in business. Also, massive thanks to the LEP, Chamber of Commerce, Kirklees College and some of our partners for the Giants there. They're an anchor institution in Huddersfield and we support them as well as they support us so thank you very much but claire this isn't isn't about me isn't about anyone else but you so it, the focus is on you so no pressure at all no but pressure if you right back to the beginning uh, why did you start baby ballet and how has it become what it is today well it, um it's a family um family affair really um i was born in huddersfield um in quite a way ago um, and my mum was a well-renowned um, ballet teacher, had a ballet school in Huddersfield. So I was really born into the world of ballet. Um, and I went to ballet as a youngster. Um, I never went to my mum's classes. She did say that I was unteachable, but I just don't think it's probably the best thing to uh, teach your own children. Um, but I went to ballet, loved it. And then as I got into my teens, I, um, I started to experience kind of some negative um, impact of it, really. I started to worry about... Um, my body image, um, not being the best, not always getting the main part. And it isn't about that, but I was focusing on the wrong things rather than the positive things of what was coming from a sport. And I know you share my um, share my values on that Earl, from a from a rugby point of view as well. So I, you know, naturally grew up with ballet all around me. Um, and at 14, I just had enough. Um, I didn't want to go anymore. Or I just kind of like just lost the love for it really um, because of the, the pressures that I was really putting on myself um, not what anybody else was actually putting on, on me it was what I was letting myself think um, so my mum was very um, very influential in the ballet world she still is she wasn't just a local ballet teacher she taught all over the world for um, um, children's examinations and um, she was um, really highly regarded as she still is 
Um, she still teaches ballet at the age of 82, which is incredible. She's been Zooming all, all, all during lockdown to her class. So I left the sport, but it didn't leave me. Um, and I'm really grateful for that now. But at the time, um, it kind of like was just all too much, too all consuming. So I left, I did different things, um, was very sporty as a person, loved sport. Um, and I was still kind of from a distance involved in the ballet world, but not as much, but it didn't go away completely. Um, so I went to uni um, and my third year of uni, um, my mum's favourite say, saying that I went to university to get a degree and I came out with a child. Um, but it was the best um, thing that ever happened to me at that point. Um, I did go on to finish my degree. Um, but unfortunately, I suffered from postnatal de depression when I'd had my son. Um, and although his dad and I are still, you know, really good friends, we didn't stay together. So I struggled to find a job that was... Um, that was um, kind of okay for not feeling very well and also being a single parent. So my mum um, seen me kind of trying to get something sorted with um, employment and she offered me a job at her school, which um, which was great. So I was helping, I'd done kind of like a few marketing things with my degree. Um, so I went back into the ballet world, um, into my mum's school to help her with kind of like growing the business, trying to increase numbers and just kind of customer service role really. Um, and going back into ballet in a bigger way, not my mum's school, but further afield and in the bigger, you know, kind of like the bigger industry, I still felt that ballet was, it was bringing negativity rather than the positives. And being a bit older, I could see all these fantastic positives that the classes were bringing. But children were still getting very wrapped up on, you know, body issues and, and things like that. So um, at the same time, we started some preschool classes up at um, Brewster's, up at Only Top, and... Um, these were for kind of like like sort of 18 months to three, four-year-olds. And instantly they were felt for me like a real positive um, environment, very positive. I mean, myself, I'd suffered, um, unfortunately, from personal depression. So it wasn't just a place for the children to learn. It was a, it was a place, a safe place, a safe community for, um, for the adults and the parents and the carers and the grandparents to come as well. And it was just this community was building. The classes filled up really quickly. Um, and it was just looking at these classes, I kind of like just wanted to get this feeling. The children were learning all these different skills, not just dancing, confidence, coordination, socializing, so many different skills. And for me, it was more about the feeling. So this feeling that was created, this community, happy, joyful feeling about a ballet class um, and a kind of movement to movie class. And I wanted that feeling to get out further. Um, I really honestly did not have a clue how to do it, what to do. Um, I just had this vision that I wanted as many children in the world to experience um, these classes as I could um, so that they would have a real positive um, memory of ballet and not have anything that would um, kind of be classed as a, a negative um, kind of upsetting memory of it. So the preschool classes were just great. Um, met some fantastic people. And then in February 2005, um, I had this idea that we're going, I mean, I started the first classes at Bruce at 99, um, working mum's class. So for six years, I'd been having this thought in my head about, I want to get this further. I started researching. I was looking into how do I just, Claire from Halifax, get this dream out there? Um, so I was looking into franchising because there was quite a lot of franchises in the children's activity sector. Um, which 15 years ago now, so you know any research I could find. But I then, um, I kind of said to them, like, this is what I want to do. Um, people knew I'd been working on something, but I'd not really shared it that much. Um, most people thought I was absolutely crackers, um, and including my mum. She was like, well, why wouldn't people just create their own class, which is, is, is true. But I could see a bigger vision, a bigger brand. I wanted children's characters, I wanted uniform, merchandise, parties just a real fun, happy place um, for children to learn and make friends. So I literally, after that point in Feb 20, 2000, well, 2005, um, I booked another venue in Brick House, another venue in Halifax, packed some teddies into a bag, some tambourines into a bag, did a bit of advertising, got a logo knocked up, um, and just went for it. Um, so went out, and there was a real need for it. Um, my passion was... You know, so I was so driven to make it happen. Um, 
that I just kind of like just I didn't let anything stand in my way because the more that I could see the children enjoying themselves the more that gave me the drive and enthusiasm to keep going um so yeah so um that was 2005 I opened the started the limited company in 2005 in September <clears throat> excuse me um and then I started to find people to work alongside me um had the most incredible team incredible people um who really believed in my vision and my dream um, and what we wanted to do. We started teaching more and more classes. We got some premises in Halifax. But for me, as well as the local side of things, it was also about the franchising so I could get it out further. Um, so was, the first franchise was in 2007. Um, and you know, like I said, I did, really did not have a clue what to do. Um, so I just had to work really, trying to find out, ask people how to do things took any kind of um, educational um, sessions, training, networking things. And I really did struggle with networking to start with. So if anyone's out there who feels like they can't, you know, it's not quite them, remember it's just people who genuinely want to help each other. And if you think about it like that, then hopefully that will give you the confidence to get out there. I just thought it was, you know, kind of corporate, suited, booted people who just didn't feel like me. Just did, I didn't feel like I was worthy or able to go into these environments. But So then we grew the brand, and then the first franchise was 2007, and um, we've now, well, kind of pre-COVID, um, we've got a range of uniform and merchandise. We've developed classes, parties. So we've got three, children, three stage shows written, We've, um, what else do we do? Events, entertainment. Obviously, COVID has taken a little bit of a knock on all this. Um, we've had to press pause on quite a lot. Um, and then we've now got 84 franchises in the UK. Um, with just pre COVID, we were on 25,000 plus children, baby ballet stars, we call them, per week. And we launched in Australia, New Zealand, and Singapore um, over the last three to four years. So we have 25, 26 licensees over there as well. Um, so yeah, so I think and maybe that kind of that does that pull it all together for you, Earl, in a kind of like you want to do it to be quick. But. What I absolutely love is how you haven't changed. And bearing in mind, I've known you for such a long time, and you talk about numbers there as if they're just flipping comments almost. But you have come from just starting off at that point to where you are now and you haven't changed one bit. You talk as if you've already got one of these businesses, which I find absolutely fascinating in itself. And it's a credit to who you are as a person as much as anything else. Um, but I have wrote a few little bits down. So when I was looking away from you, I'm picking up on lots of different things that like you've said. I'm more interested as well, um, a little about, about, about the hurdles um, the obstacles that you may have come up against as you're trying to build this new career and this new business yourself? Uh, well, God, many, 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 many. And that's like kind of like I said to you, it's like it's just, I mean, I like to think that we've got Yorkshire grit and the tenacity is there and, you know, like you find a brick wall, I'll find a way around it. Um, but it's, it's it has been tough. And I've got four children now. So I had Harry when um, I was 22. He's now um, 24. No, that can't be right because I'm 47. So <laughs> you see, you can't be good at everything. Leave the finances and the numbers to someone else. Um, so, so yes, yeah, so then I've got Charlie's 17, um, Claudia's 14 and Kitty's 12. So they've all been around. So, And one of my main things was I didn't want to be a, a businesswoman. I didn't want to be, you know, just that and then get other people. I wanted to be a mum first and foremost so that the juggle and the balance has you know at times gone way off but for me I wanted to I didn't want to look back and think god well yeah I've grown a business but what about my family you know my family are my absolute world um so yeah so I'd, I'd say the juggle of being a mum and a wife and a and all those things um as well as having the business but even then, I mean, when you started off, you, you kind of expected that it would become what it is, as in the size of it. At what point? I mean, like playing professional rugby league, I started at you know ten years old. I got to about fifteen, sixteen. I turned professional. It changed. My world changed. Everything changed. Suddenly became uh, different pressures. I was scrutinised and things like that. At what point did it stop being a hobby as such? I don't mean that disrespectfully, but turn into something a lot bigger. Well. <laughs> To be honest, I've never, 
I've just just always kind of just kept putting one foot in front of the other. And I think franchising, franchising is a game changer and a positive because it allows you to maintain your exceptional brand standards and your, you know, your systems and all that. You can replicate those. But with every franchisee it becomes a responsibility for a person. And I am driven by making people happy. So that's tough because, you know, with all these people to look after, um, that for me is that's that's been pretty hard but now I try not to think about the numbers because of the you know you think like god it feels like a lot of responsibility um but I mean I know that you and I have shared um kind of like chats in the past about you know it's, perception is very different to reality what people think of you um is different to if they walk today in your shoes and you know I think some people they don't really think what's you know kind of know what's involved behind the scenes and one of my big things that actually quite floored me that I took quite a bit of time to get back up from was I won a business award going back probably about 13 years ago. And for me, I was just Miss Claire, you know, who was doing the dance classes. And that's what I love doing um, and growing. But unfortunately, I won a business award and some people's perception of me changed overnight. And I hated that because I was no different. I was just this, you know, person with a dream and you know, it, 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 it was amazing how that, and it did, it kind of like took some things to heart that which I probably shouldn't have done, but yeah. it's a lesson to have learned, I suppose, over the years. Mm. Well, my perception could never change of you simply because I was there <laughs> in the early years. Um, and I mean, I've, as a as a young player come through, I had to dress up as a Giants mascot. I mean, you wouldn't have ever done anything like that, would you? <laughs> never, never. <laughs> no, because our mascots are real, you see, because we have real bears. We have real bears who live in the castle in the sky, so... Of course you do, of course you do. Yeah. So um, let's, go, let's go a bit closer to time. Recent, uh, 2020... It's the world seems to have changed a little bit. Here we are, instead of meeting up, having a big event at the stadium, we're, we're doing online versions and I'm stuck in an office. I put these backdrops up so you can't see the breeze block behind them. I'm wearing a suit. I've not even got shoes on. You know, the world's changing all the time. What have you had to do to make sure your business not only just continues, but it's more sustainable as well? Have you had to implement a lot of changes? We have. It's been absolutely, yeah, what a challenge. I mean, everybody, you know, my heart goes out to everybody who's had, um, had well, everybody's had to deal with this this in, in this year in some capacity. Um, but it was our 15th anniversary year. So we had, you know, it's a crystal is the, the 15th year. So we had all this fantastic stuff lined up. Um, and then in March, it literally was, the rug was pulled from under our feet. But um, we were able to pivot online. We were meant to be able to go online, but our age group is six months to six years. So it's the engagement at that age is very difficult. So um, franchises and licensees did manage to go online, but then numbers went down. You know, we've had huge financial impact. We've, um, we've not got the office anymore. We've had to make some really tough decisions with the team. Um, so it, it's, yeah, it's been the toughest year ever to be in business, but I'm very much like, I always try and look on the positive and it's as soon as it hit, it was like, what can we do? Not what can't we do? You know, and so we've created additional content. Um, we've, I made it my mission when we knew that it was gonna be like this to just support the network as best I could. So we did daily Zoom calls um, for the first few weeks, couple of months. Um, we created loads of stuff for them. We got them networking, again, the networking word, it sounds so, Kind of, so kind of like networking sometimes feels a bit, I don't know, scary, but my network of franchisees and licensees has never been tighter because everybody has supported each other. And I've never felt such support back from them because, you know, it's the, the franchising business is, it's, if, if my business goes, I'm responsible for their businesses. And so I had to really kind of like, you know, do everything I can. And I just said to everybody, I'll be honest, there'll be no judgment. Let's just keep talking to each other. How best can we get through this? We didn't have any statistics to work on. We didn't have any experience to work on. Firefighting, um, you know, constantly, constantly, constantly. But I'd say as a network with the franchisees, then, you know, we are, it's a real positive that everybody's stronger together. It's fantastic to hear that. Um, you mentioned franchisees and franchising your business. Um, at what point did that sort of start to escalate and how did you realise then that that is something that you would want to do? And could you tell us a little bit about how that works to a certain degree? With franchising, yes. Yeah. So um, in the early days when I was kind of like thinking about the brand and the um, kind of like the, the ethos and all the values that go with a brand, I mean, Giants is a brand and, you know, someone who's just got a little idea, it's kind of, 
it's, it's not just your logo, it's the people, it's the culture, it's the, um, the everything to do with that, that name of your, of your company. So it was really kind of making all the systems so that people can replicate those systems really easily. Um, and then they can have a business on the back of your, of your brand. So um, franchising isn't as complicated as it might seem. I mean, when I set off, I didn't know what it was. Um, and, you know, it, it was quite a scary thought to, to think, well, I'm going to franchise it. And, you know, that's when probably people thought, you know, I gave up business degree at Huddersfield New College after two weeks because I didn't understand it when I was doing my A levels. So I'm not surprised they kind of questioned it. But you know, it's like getting the people around you who can help, who you can do as much learning as you can. But it's great. So I mean, I now have the the dream, and then people can take that and run their own business on the back of our brand and make sure that we're all kind of all our kind of like we're all on the vision of the brand standards. Um, we're very, very, very tight on branding and you know nobody can like create their own green and yellow logo and things like that and but I mean I, I know that you are the same it's like people come to Huddersfield Giants but you're a, you're a business you're a brand you've got to you you've got to make sure that everybody associated with that whether you whether you were a player or whether you were presenting them at a different level that everyone's clear on what those values are so that whoever you're talking to wherever you are in the world everybody's got that same kind of vision i suppose yeah and it's something i can actually pick up off the back of, of what you're just saying there so um it's not just in businesses that the brand and values are so important now for rugby league players and rugby league teams it's something that we really focus on it's something that i've always talked about in uh, motivational speaking and things like that the importance of having uh, the right culture the right environment and everybody singing off the same sheet if it's it, as it were mm -hmm. Now, for us, uh, the Giants, we had set words, like different words that would mean certain things. Now, these uh, different ways of looking at this, but you could say a word like commitment. A commitment is just a generic word. It, do it doesn't really mean that much unless you put a little bit more to it. So for the Giants, commitment in words meant something in actions. So we had to show that in action. So we all believed in commitment of what it mm -hmm. meant. Now, is this something that you've taken into your business? You talk about brand, you talk about values. What are your values and what do they mean to you and all the rest of the franchisees? Well, my values are very much about exceptional service and exceptional teaching standards. And so that when people touch on that brand, wherever it is, they feel it's about they feel that they can trust us they can feel that they are part of a community um a safe community a, a place where children can can learn to dance safely and take all these ex other skills but also for me when i was you know like kind of like the, there weren't really any net not networking but mums and toddlers groups were like kind of like there were many activities for children when i first had harry and you know it's about that community that you you've got and everybody kind of just expecting expectations that people want from you. I mean, when your niece, yeah, when your granddaughter comes to baby ballet, which she's already booked in by the way, she's yeah, got the kit. <laughs> <laughs> I'll expect you to be doing your good toes, naughty toes, granddad ale. Um, <laughs> Too old, you can't do that. <laughs> that you want really to, is. you know what to expect before you come. Mm. So you know that you'll expect a really warm welcome, you know, that you'll be, um, it won't be, um, anything other than welcoming and inclusivity we you know we work with parents and carers to bring any child in we don't um we don't have any any kind of like exclusive um club type things it's everybody is welcome um so yeah so that for me it's for people to trust us before they even come and to know what to expect is my my real kind of main overarching job to make sure that i'm doing the best i can for the whole brand and all those people within it do you think over the um, the years, as society changes, the way you've had to deal with things have changed? I mean, we talk about 2020 has been a defining year in what's happened. But before this, the world has changed a heck of a lot. Have you had to move with the times or have you just got a set structure? No, absolutely. Like technology has come on so much since I first started. Um, so technology, I mean, we've all I've always had an inclusivity um kind of policy because that's why I started it. I wanted every child, any child to be able to walk through the door, 
come through the door, even if they can now not able to get through the door, going online has given us this hybrid model opportunity now to be able to chill some children who can't come to class. They might not be able-bodied enough to come to class. They can now um, join us online. So, I mean, gosh, yeah, changes. And this year, I mean, I'm actually a really big fan of Zoom because it's allowed us to, um, to connect. It's allowed us to have this platform to keep in touch. I mean, my franchise network have used it, we've used it so often because, you know, it's just seeing those people that you can't see face to face. It's a, a kind of second best option. Yeah, technology and, you know, all, you just have to move with the times, don't you? You can't be stuck in your ways. You've got to keep moving and keep evolving. And yeah, that's one thing that we like to think that we, we have always done. I totally agree with that. I mean, you've actually said before when we were speaking uh, before this event that it has changed the way, way you work. I mean, literally, you can just step upstairs instead <laughs> of actually jumping on a plane, which has become a massive part of your life. And it must take so much commitment, probably away from your family at times. I imagine it's not been you know, straightforward getting to that stage of all these uh, businesses around the world. I mean, can you tell us a little bit more about these businesses that you've opened abroad? I mean, how's that happened? So, yeah, so I was approached in 2016 by um, someone in America, um, a, a guy who's really well connected in the dance industry over there. He'd found out about our brand, loved it, loved what we were all about, felt there was a big gap over there. Um, and he wanted to, I mean, I've always wanted to get baby ballet everywhere. That's the dream. Um, but he was kind of like that, that person that set up in partnership with him over there. So he knew that the industry over there um, and, it's just as soon as we got actually he had got an opportunity to move to america so he it, the business was over there and it was kind of like right okay so i'm in halifax but i've got a business on the other side of the world what do i do now so again i just kind of like thought right just gotta go sort it out um went over met with everybody i could um but i mean you know like you're saying about the 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 um the technology now that we can use. I've kept in touch with those licensees over on the other side of the world as much as I've kept in touch with the ones um, here in the UK. And it's been really fascinating seeing what's been happening over there and how things have they've, they've, you know, been a lot kind of more fortunate with us with the COVID situation. But it's been really fascinating to be able to keep up on that. And in the next couple of weeks, I've got a big event um, in the UK on Thursday. And I've also got another event um, in well I'm, I'm hitting australia new zealand and singapore for an event next week i mean that i mean just look i would have been on flights i'd have had to leave the family um it would have cost a lot on finances you know everyone's struggling finance wise this time this 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 point so it's helped with um the financial impact of that travel so i'm just real like i kind of just like to look on the bright side rather than feeling sorry for myself or woe me and don't yeah. get me wrong i've had some <laughs> I've had some like moments this year where like Oscar women, Oscar winning yeah. meltdowns for sure. But I think everybody has, haven't they? Yeah, yeah, again, I totally agree. And uh, it, it is funny how you are adapting, uh, you are changing, and it's fantastic to see. Again, you just you just don't change for me ever, which I, I just absolutely <laughs> love about you. It's brilliant. Um, but we've talked about the past, we've talked about the present. What about the future for Baby Ballet? What's going to happen? Well, we. Um, we are seeing like a, a lot of franchise inquiries now. I think people are, um, we always at this time of year get a lot of people starting to think about our oh, new year, new me, um, inquire about franchises, getting their own business. I do a lot of um, kind of events with people. So it's kind of like that time of year. But because of COVID and the impact of COVID, people have had more time to reflect on what they want to do. What is it that they want out of their life? And so franchising inquiries um, have really increased for us. Um, so we're going to continue um, with the franchise growth, continue with the licensing growth. But for me, um, we do have children's characters, um, which um, they kind of like, they just kind of like get, give children that connection with everything that we do. And I really want to develop those characters further. We've written the first book, which was um, due to be launched in, well, probably February, March. So that was put on the shelf. It wasn't quite a priority this year. So I'm looking forward to getting that book out. Um, and I'm also looking into animating the characters and getting them more um, kind of like a, as a um, an everyday household name so that we can get the values out of Baby Ballet through different channels. So. You said yeah. there was a stage show as well. You've, you've written some little bits up and uh, what's that all like? So we've got three stage shows. Um, my amazing creative team um, have written the stage shows. Um, so the franchisees can then 
But it's just like, I mean, a franchise is a business in a box, isn't it? So then they get the classes, the syllabus, the program, the music, the training DVDs for the classes. They get the parties, they get this and the other. They get the, um, and the st three stage shows so they can create and um, hold their own stage shows um, with characters. And then the children get involved. The baby ballet stars at their classes are the performers, really. So, so the Huddersfield franchise would then, you know, hire out LBT, um, not LBT, Lauren Spatley, and um, it is LBT. <laughs> yes, that's right. It, it is, is yeah. LBT. I know, I've done um, a lot of pantos there. Yeah, well, there's, that's in the day of the real world when we actually used to yes. go to venues, those places <laughs> that hopefully before long we'll be back open. So, yeah. so yeah, so that's, um, those are the stage shows, just to give a real lovely experience for the, the families and the, and the children to perform on stage. Fantastic. With zero pressure. <laughs> Well, um, it feels like you've been under a little bit of pressure. I feel like I'm interrogating you at times. Here. It's not like that. It's just, uh, I think everyone will be interested in, in your story and what, what words of wisdom you could give people. But talking of words of wisdom, sitting here now, looking back at when you started out, what words of wisdom would you give yourself back then? Well, be brave enough to follow my dream. I've always, I have always kind of like being brave enough to follow my dream um, I would say surround yourself with positive supportive people and anybody who isn't gonna add to your um, kind of what sort of like we chatted about this again didn't we yeah, the other day yeah, about yeah. if somebody's if, if people are not helping you on your dream like you don't feel like they're giving you the support you need you know like don't surround yourself with people who are going to make it more difficult for you. you want those people to be able to lift you up to really say you know i'm here for you or um you know can i help you um it's that circle of trust isn't it that, that that's what you want your circle of trust these important people that are positive for you and i totally relate to that yeah and i mean networking network 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 the people that i've met um on this journey, it's just been, you know, the most fantastic people. I never, ever, I just can talk to, I just want to learn so much from other people's experiences. And people do genuinely want to help you. Um, and then you, there'll be something that you could give back to them as well, which is, is a great feeling. Um, never stop learning. Um, every day is a school day. Um, I really didn't have a clue when I started what, you know, what it was. This franchising word was kind of like this, what on earth is it? Um, so access any learning that's available. I heard earlier um, saying about, you know, any, um, any learning um, opportunities that are out there, network opportunities, grab them with both hands. Don't be afraid to go to those places um, and say you need help, you want help, and you want to grow a business. Um, those, you know, the NatWest are there to help you, and they want you to help to grow your business. Um, don't worry about what people think. I've probably spent far too much time worrying about what people think over the years. Um, and it's it's not productive um just do your very best and if you know that you're doing your best um you've only really got yourself to answer to if you're not doing it as best to the best of your ability um yeah and keep your eye on your dream and follow your dreams and you know if, you, if you're at the beginning of a business idea now and you're listening to this you know just just go for it just because you do, i don't didn't want to look back and think oh god i wish i'd have done that and, you know, I might have made some mistakes along the way. I might have had some real challenges along the way. But I was so glad that I actually did take that plunge and start my own business. So I'd say go for it. Go for it. Fantastic stuff, Claire. I think, to be honest, I mean, we've covered quite a lot of ground there. And uh, let's say thank you very, very much, honestly, for <laughs> today to be able to tell us your story. Hopefully, you're just going to hang around a little bit longer. There will be a Q&A so people have opportunity to speak to the panellists, yourself, me, if there's any questions, not about hair products, which is normally a lad's question that I always get, get which is ridiculous. But it's, uh, you know, this is a, relax, a relaxed atmosphere. I've really enjoyed just listening to you speak. Please never change, Claire. I think you're absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Uh, thank you once again to NatWest, Hercules College, Chamber of Commerce as well. But I'd like now, if possible, to hand back over to Heather. Once again, thank you very much, Claire. And uh, Thank you for having you. me. Thank you very much for having me. I really appreciate being asked. Thank you. Oh, Claire, wow. Um, <laughs> Deeply impressed with you. And you just touched on so many of the points that we raised upon the rose of you, the kind of barriers that women come up against and how you've overcome them. As you say, networking, and that, that's why we're so impressed what Huddersfield Giants do with their networking they bring together there. So thanks very much. If you can stick around to later for the Q&A, that'd be great. Of course. 
Brilliant. And one of the areas we, you know, we talked about from the Rose View is actually where do you go? You know, who who gives that support? Who's there to, to help you? How who can help you with funding? Yes, we're a bank, but we're not the only people actually can help you get your funding sorted and help you get ready to be investor ready. So um our next speakers are going to be from the Leeds um City Region Enterprise Partnership, which will be Jane and Lorna. So I'm going to hand over to you two ladies to go through the business support that's available. Thanks very much. Thank you, Heather, and thanks to Claire and Earl. That was really inspiring, so thank you for that. Um, but we're going to tell you a little bit about the Leeds City Region Enterprise Partnership. So my name is Lorna Holroyd, and I manage um, the Business Support Service. And I'm Jane Green, and I work in the Employment and Skills team at Leeds City Region Enterprise Partnership. So firstly, um, do you want to, sorry, can you share the slides, um, Erica? Well, whilst we're waiting for that, um, just tell you a little bit about the Leeds City Region Enterprise Partnership and what it is, because it's a little bit of a mouthful. So we call it the LEP for short. Um, but the LEP is a local authority organisation which is funded by central government and also some European funding. And it provides funding to help businesses to grow and to develop the skills to create new jobs in the region. So how do we do that? Well, we have a team of advisors who can support your business by connecting you to suitable support that is available in the region. We have a gateway team that you can connect with by phone or email. And we also have a team of advisors who are based in the different local authorities and are there to account managed businesses in their districts. Next slide, please. So what is the Leeds City Region? Well, it's all of West Yorkshire. So Bradford, Calderdale, Kirklees, Leeds and Wakefield and also some parts of North Yorkshire. So Craven, Harrogate, Selby and York. Um, all of our support is available in West Yorkshire and some of it is available across the full city region. So what support can we provide? Next slide, please. Um, so we connect businesses with all of the support available in the region. That includes advisory support, such as workshops and mentoring, as well as grant funding. And we have a number of different grant products. We have some products that we deliver in-house ourselves, and we can also refer your business to other providers of business support. So I'm just going to very briefly talk about some of the ways that we can support your business. So for example, if you're looking to innovate, or which could be developing a new product or process or pivoting an existing product or process, then we have a team of specialist advisors who can support your innovation journey. And there's also some grant funding to help you to do this. If you're looking at ways to reduce your environmental impact by reducing your energy, water and waste use, um, we can help you do that. And again, there's some grant funding available to support you to implement projects. And we can also help you to look at sustainable travel options for your employees. If you're looking to start up a new business, um, as Claire was 15 years ago, then we can help you with that as well. And we, again, we have grant and advisory support available to help you to do that. We can also help you if you're scaling up an existing business. And again, we have grant funding projects to help you to expand um, and create new jobs. If you're looking at exploring new markets, then we can connect you with the Department for International Trade. And that's just... Um, a flavour of some of the support that's available. And I wanted to particularly mention a special offer that we have running at the moment with three membership organisations in our region, which are the Federation of Small Businesses, the Western North Yorkshire Chamber of Commerce and the Mid Yorkshire Chamber of Commerce. And these are all fantastic organisations that can support your business in many ways, including providing you with HR advice, legal advice, marketing support, help with trading internationally and networking with other businesses. And we're currently subsidising the cost of you joining these organisations. So if you join before the end of February, you'll pay a fraction of the normal joining fee to access all of this incredible support. Um, and I'm just going to hand over to Jane now, who will tell you something about our employment and skills offers. Thanks, Lorna. So with employment and skills, we have offers for individuals and also for businesses. So I just wanted to briefly talk to you about some of the offers that we have. For individuals, we have an all age careers platform called Future Goals. And this supports young people to find out about careers pathways. It also gives resources for teachers and adults to support skills developments and help young people to be work ready. The site also supports adults to look at access for retraining and their career development as well. So it's a great, great website for, for people to access and get support. 
In addition to this, for young people, we have the Employment Hub, and that's been really key, um, particularly with COVID, helping young people who are unemployed find jobs and they have a, a job match service that will help businesses engage with young people and, and create and fill those vacancies. So a, a really good offer for the region, and that's really grown in, in recent months. Also for adults, we're looking at retraining, and we're keen to support people's career development. So we have two programmes, um, one of them called Reboot, which looks at retraining individuals in our key sectors, so digital construction and manufacturing courses. And very hot off the press, we've just launched a digital boot camp, and that's um, literally been launched this week. So you will see on LinkedIn and uh, other social media this program that's going to start in January and will help people retrain and upskill in, digital, in the digital sector. So also as part of the West Yorkshire Combined Authority devolution deal, which you will see in the news, we um, will be managing the adult education budget from next year. And this budget helps us um, engage with unemployed people to gain and sustain employment and increase their skills um, whilst they're in work. For businesses, we have a wide range of offers. And as mentioned before about the Employment Hub, um, they're, they're a team of business engagement officers there who will work with businesses and look at their recruitment and support and match those young people in a talent matching service. We also have a, a team of business partnership advisors who work in our Skills for Growth programme and they talk to businesses about what their actual needs are and, and what they need to develop their talent pipeline and to look at the skills that they're looking for in their staff. And that team will engage businesses with our wide range of education establishments. We've got 180 schools and colleges in the region and nine fantastic universities. So it's really key for businesses to engage with, with those establishments to develop their talent pipeline and look at the skills for the future. We have an enterprise advisor network, which is a national program, and that recruits business volunteers from all sectors looking to work with schools and help them develop their careers program. Their businesses can uh, volunteer and help out with mock interviews and all sorts of different activities in schools, but it's all aimed to make young people work ready. We also know that businesses value their staff and want to develop them and we support the skills service which is run by West Yorkshire Consortium of Colleges and this offers training including leadership and management, export training which is quite key at the moment, uh, innovation and also key skills for businesses. So a great offer that you can uh, find out more about on our website. And we're always listening to businesses and looking for how we can support. And recently we've been working with larger businesses in the region and their unspent levy. And what we can do is use this transfer system to um, use the unspent levy to help our SMEs in the area to recruit um, and train apprenticeships. And the levy transfer scheme will help small businesses cover the costs of that, that training. And Thank I'm going you, to pass Jim. back to Lorna. <laughs> <laughs> if we can move on to the last slide from us then, please. So this is just our contact details. So if there's anything that you're interested in that Jane and I have spoken to about today, or you'd like to find out about other ways that we can su support your business, then the best thing to do is just get in touch with us um, and we can talk to you about your business and we can refer you to any support in the region that will help your business to grow. Um, so that's our contact information there. So please do get in touch if you're interested in any of this support. And we shall hand back to Heather. That's brilliant. Thanks so much that Lorna and Jane. <clears throat> and we will send the contact details out on the follow up email um, following the event as well to make sure people have got it. And so our last speaker today is from um, the NatWest um, Entrepreneur Accelerator Programme that we operate over in Leeds. Now normally I have a hub there, but obviously like everything else, it's all been done digitally these days. So it's great to actually have a live person with us today, Nick, um, to deliver around pitching. This is one of the skills that we um, teach to all the entrepreneurs that come through the program, whether they come through the digital um, business builder program or actually come through the cohorts that normally would sit in our hubs. And I urge everybody following this lesson to go away and actually build your pitch using this form because it does absolutely work brilliantly. So Nick, I'll hand it over to you. Thank you, Heather. And um, yes, 
glad to be on today's session. Um, so my name is Nick McCafferty. I work for the entrepreneurship team uh, for NatWest uh, based in Leeds, um, but we're based all across the UK as well. So um, today I just really want to give you an insight uh, into how you can get involved uh, in our entrepreneurship team. And then as Heather says, look through um, our 60 second pitch structure and how you can really use that to, to benefit your business. So if we bring up the first slide, um, as I say, um, I just want to chat to you about our Business Builder program. So what is Business Builder? Um, it's an online tool for entrepreneurs um, and it's really there to, to build your community of like-minded entrepreneurs and also upskill yourself um, as an entrepreneurial leader. You know, as Claire was saying, having that community around you of like-minded entrepreneurs is so vital to your business's growth. Um, and Business Builder is that online tool that can help you with that. So it's fully funded by NatWest. And you don't need to be a NatWest customer to avail of the tool as well. So it's really, really easy to sign up. Um, if you just scan the QR code that you can see there or pop into your search engine, natwestbusinessbuilder.com, um, and you'll be able to sign up right away. Now, what is the tool? What can you get involved in with NatWest Business Builder? Um, we've got online learning that's accessible 24 seven. Um, so covering topics such as pitching, mindset, business model canvas, customer discovery, risk, financial proofing, lots of different subjects um, that you can use the tool to upskill yourself on, learn more about. Um, and the beauty of it is you can do it in your own time as well. And um, so it's there 24 seven. We've also got an access to an online community. So we've got a Facebook group um, of over 3000 um, different founders. So again, a really powerful community that you can use to ask questions, share best practice, get feedback from other peers. Um, and, and as everyone knows, entrepreneurship is a is a lonely place at the best of times, um, but now more so than ever. So having that online community there and um, that support network there is really, really valuable. Um, and the final aspect of biz Business Builder that we have is wraparound events as well. So we run networking events every single week, again, based on topics like pitching and mindset. Um, and again, just an opportunity to, to connect with other founders ask questions and, and connect, connect with ourselves in that West entrepreneurship team. So we're a really, really valuable tool, as I say, easy to sign up to. And um, so check out Business Builder, get involved in it, because um, it's well worth signing up. And um, so if we move on to the next slide, um, the exciting bit, as Heather said, I want to just give you a bit of a flavor um, of our pitch structure and really why pitching is so important for an entrepreneur at any stage from startup right through to an established business having a really strong pitch and um, is really really important um, and this pitch structure we use for 60 second pitches which 60 seconds isn't a lot of time um, and it's very very difficult to do but if you can articulate your business's pitch in 60 seconds you can translate that to two minutes five minutes beyond and um, so it's a really really effective structure this structure that you see has been means tested by thousands of entrepreneurs and um, through our accelerator program. So that's my main advice is to stick to the structure, follow the structure because it's means tested by thousands of entrepreneurs. So looking at the structure, I'm going to take you through each element of it uh, and just give you some tips on how to include these in your 60 second pitch. So the most important thing starting off your 60 second pitch and um, include a hook. So what is a hook? Something about your business that will get your audience excited, get them interested from the beginning. Something interesting, something unique, and um, that'll get people talking about your business. So to give you a few examples, um, I work with a business called Noisy Nuts, and the founder of Noisy Nuts is Noel, Noisy Noel. And Noisy Noel starts his pitch, um, his 60 second pitch, making as much noise as possible, whether it be a hooter, a klaxon, just making so much noise. Um, and it really startles the audience. But when he's at pitch competitions against 60 other businesses, who do they remember is Noisy Noel's nuts because he made all, all that noise. Now, I'm not suggesting every single business make loads of noise and that's the way to, to start your pitch. You can do it other ways. And um, so I also work with a business called Tap SOS um, and Tap, Tap SOS is 
an app for the deaf community for communicating with um, emergency services. So Becca, the founder of TAP SOS, she starts her pitch using sign language. So again, a really interesting hook um, that just reinforces the challenge that she has um, and her customers have with communicating with the audience. So again, there you've got two completely different hooks um, from two ends of the spectrum, but equally as impactful when it comes to engaging your audience and getting them in, into and excited about your product or service. So think about that when it comes to your business, what ideas, what can you creatively come up with um, as a way to engage and hook in your audience um, and get them excited about your pitch and your business? Because as I say, your 60 second pitch it's all about making you stand out from the crowd and um, get people speaking about your business and excited about it so that's the hook it takes a bit of time and to, to really pull off but once you've really got a really strong hook it, it's it's really effective um, in your 60 second pitch so once you've got the hook it's then followed by the problem and um, so really simply and clearly can you articulate the problem you're solving for your customers and in a really succinct sentence. So being as clear and simple as possible, and um, can you articulate that problem? And once you've articulated the problem, it's then followed by the solution. So what's your unique selling point? What's exciting? What's different about the business? Um, and what is the solution that you're solving for your customers? So again, similar to the problem, you wanna articulate the solution um, for your business in one simple, clear section. So you've got hook, problem, solution, then followed by opportunity. So what is the market size? What is the size of the opportunity? Are you operating locally? Are you operating in Yorkshire? Is it UK based worldwide? What's the size of the market? Um, and in the opportunity section, is there an opportunity to show that you know your numbers, that you've done your market research and um, numbers equals credibility so really show that in the opportunity side that you know your market you've been diligent uh, and you understand your business and that comes across in your 60 second pitch once we've got the opportunity and um, it's then followed by the team which is one aspect that entrepreneurs tend to leave out of their pitch and um, they forget to talk about themselves and um, and their team around them as well and again, it's the people driving the business. So it's so important to include that in your pitch. So what are your expertise? What are your credibility? What's your experience um, of yourself um, and your team around you? And if you're right at the beginning of your business stage and it's just yourself as the founder of the business, then think about, well, what team do you have supporting you in terms of stakeholders, growth hubs, mentors, boards, but who are the people in your business that are driving it forward. So don't forget to include your team in your 60 second pitch. And then finally, um, and the most important aspect of any pitch is always, always have an ask uh, when you're finishing a pitch. So when you've articulated your story, um, there's no point finishing it off without, without having an ask at the end. You've engaged the audience, they're interested in your business, now, what can you ask them um, as an opportunity to take forward? So tailor this towards your audience. And um, so if you have customers in the audience you're pitching to and um, it may be sales oriented, you might want to ask them to go to your website or check out your new service. If there's investors in the audience, you might be tailoring your pitch towards and um, funding asking for some sort of funding support. And um, or if there's mentors in the audience, you may be asking for support mentoring and uh, with a certain skills gap that you may have so i can't stress that enough always finish and um, your 60 second pitch with that really strong ask for support so that is it that's the pitch structure and um, as i say very difficult to to get in 60 seconds but once you've nailed it and um, it's so impactful for your business and um, and as i say whether it be in front of customers stakeholders investors it really gives entrepreneurs the opportunity to to take those opportunities in front of them um, and articulate your business really well. And um, so that's the structure. Other side of the pitch is all focused on the delivery as well. So be yourself, be confident, smile and, you know, enjoy that experience. And um, because, as I say, be, be yourself. It's not a, it's not a, an act. People buy people at the end of the day. And um, so don't forget that. 
But that is some tips, as I say, on the 60 second pitch structure. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Um, and as I say, if you want to find out more, sign up to the Business Builder program um, because we run weekly um, group sessions on pitching. And um, you can also practice your pitch, put it in the Facebook group and get some feedback on it as well. And um, so as I say, use the Business Builder for platform to really start getting to work with your pitch because it's a, a very valuable tool. So that is pitching. Um, I'm now going to hand back to Heather, who's going to take us for a Q&A. Brilliant, that, Nick. Thank you so much. And as you say, it was a quick tour of how pitching works. And if you see it actually in demonstration, it does really prove how much information you can share in 60 seconds and be really impactful as well. So, yes, we're coming to the end of our time. We've got seven minutes left. Um, it's been amazing. The amount of information we shared. Um, we're going to invite all the speakers back on. And I just really want to go back to the rows of you. Um, we talked about the barriers, the things that stop women starting to scale the business and how many of those um identified barriers have we actually covered today where we talked about you know overcoming the kind of awareness of finance how you can actually get that support networking mentoring role models I mean you know Claire what an inspirational lady you know how you know how we could you know the information you've shared today you talked about the networking how you grew your business so I'm, I'm thrilled with the information people have been willing to share today so I've got Lauren, Lana has come back through Claire's here we're just waiting for Ailes come back up. Wonderful. So I'll just start with a couple of um, observations. So a lady, um, Nahid has sort of asked us about sharing the, the sessions. And just on that, if anybody is watching, um, the YouTube, if you're on YouTube, the, the clip will stay live. So you actually can share that with other people to watch it after the event's finished. And we'll do the same with the LinkedIn one. So this session is recorded and it's there for us to share post event so please do share um with anybody you'd like to on that side um also um far training have come through and this obviously aimed at um i think this would be jane this would be yours really um saying we are an apprenticeship training provider how could we work with you to offer apprenticeship training to accounting apprentices so i think jane that sits with you that one yep so there's there's two routes with this so one is um, get in touch with our apprenticeship levy support service and register as a provider there. So if you have any SMEs looking for funding for the training, they um, you can work with them to offer that training. And the other thing is to work with uh, your local employment hub. So depending on where you're based, contact the local employment hub. And the, again, there's links on our LEP website to, to the local employment hubs. And they will... Um, support you in uh, having the young people who are looking for apprenticeships and also um, the, the businesses that are looking for those those apprenticeship training um, providers. So um, those are the two routes, but they're all on our website. So it's the Employment Hub and also our apprenticeship levy team. And just on that, we will share the links to everybody's websites who've been speaking today, um, just so you can actually pick it up rather than trying to write everything down. Nick, I was just going to come to you because, um, you know, we didn't talk an awful lot about the, the Accelerator Hub um, and the support we've done. We said, we said we've got 12 hubs. Oh, that's how they gone. <laughs> you dropped out. <laughs> Yeah, I think all you're going to say, Nick, is obviously, um, do you want to explain to us a little bit more about the Accelerator Hub? Um, obviously, the one based in Leeds. Yes, no problem. So, yes, it's not just um, Business Builder that I was explaining today, um, how we support um, entrepreneurs. Rachel, as you know, we've got a number of, of different programs, um, I say supporting entrepreneurs, right from early stage businesses right through to your scale businesses, high growth businesses, established run family businesses. So, um, we have got uh, 12 accelerator hubs across the UK. And um, so in the north of England, we've got Leeds, Manchester and Newcastle and um, most big cities in England. And um, our accelerator hubs now are, are digital as, as everything else is online. Um, and that's really supporting entrepreneurs um, who have really gained traction in the market. They've got customers now and they're looking to take the next step. Um, and how we do that is through one to one coaching. So I'm one of the coaches in the Leeds hub. And that's monthly sessions holding entrepreneurs to account along their journey and uh, really listening to their vision that they have um, and then holding them to account along the time um, that they're on the program. We also have a number of partners who support the accelerator as well. So we're partnered with the likes of Hiscox and Deloitte, Pinsent Mason's free agent. Um, 
who you know are support outside the bank so any expertise we don't have within that west and um, they support the entrepreneurs with as well and um, so it's really wrap around support um, and we run a number of, of networking events as well for the entrepreneurs so and um, we'll keep you posted on that as i say the best way to to find out about our accelerator programs is to, to stay within the business builder network so sign up to business builder um, and then it'll keep you in the loop when it comes to the accelerator programs because we've got lots of different programs we've launched the climate accelerator as well and um, a fintech program um, and then we've got a next level program as well which is for high growth scale up entrepreneurs as well so there's lots going on across and um, the entrepreneurship team in that west and, and as i say keep keep, uh, keep involved but if you are and um, keen to find out more sign up to business builder uh, and that'll sign post you to to all the support and um, that is there within the entrepreneurship team thanks nick thanks for that i just want to touch touch back on um because lord but we start off this whole journey of actually putting the event together when i get kept and told you must speak to earl was when we were actually launching the mentoring program and really actually delighted that out of two cities across the whole of england leeds is one of the ones that's chosen for the pilot and it's really been um well received um, and that's the words coming back from Be The Business Who Hosts The Platform. Um, so an awful lot of the women are coming from Lee City Region are going on the, the mentoring platform. And we've had a good number of women now actually got themselves set up on the platform and are finding their mentor. So I just want to go two things this. We've had far more women going on and clicking to say, I want to get a mentor than are actually completing because this is a bit where you have to put down about your business, about what you're good at and actually what you want some help with. And I think this whole imposter syndrome, we don't like saying what we're good at, we're actually we a bit shy, allegedly all women are. Um, so please do not um, shy away. If you want some help, put in your application, not your application, put your profile together. Please do contact either myself, Rachel, um, someone from the LEP or someone from Business Builder and we'll help you make sure you put your profile together because you need to do the profile and then, you know, as I said, it's a Tinder approach. You swipe and off you'll find out lots of great mentors will come available to you and you will then choose the one you think can help you the most. And this is free of charge. You get 12 weeks, so that's 12 sessions of an hour actually to start you off and go out and particularly, you know, and Claire talks about her experience and become the right people um, surrounding you. This is a great opportunity and I really want Leeds to embrace this and make the most of the opportunities we've got to go first in the north of England. So it's a really good opportunity for us. Um, so, you know, really please, you know, do, you know, do take part in that as well. And, you know, as Claire would say, you surround yourself with good people. Claire's at the point now where she could be mentor or the business is what you do through your franchise. And so as well, your journey is growing in one direction, Claire. I guess you're giving back all the time, even though you, you're, you're building at the same time, aren't you, Claire? Yeah, yeah, it's lovely. It does feel like now, you know, I, I love being able to help people anyway. So it's, I think, you, yeah, I just feel, I mean, when I was listening to all the other the speakers, it's sometimes when I remember starting off and thinking, but I don't understand that terminology. I don't know what, you know, that means about all the, the different parts of a business. So don't be frightened by the, those words, you know, you've got an idea. Don't, don't feel that's a barrier. Don't, um, you know, because yeah. business can sound quite scary sometimes and, um um, you know it's just don't think of those big words as something that you know are, are going to stop you you just need to find the people to help you through those parts that you're not so good at and, and focus on the things that you're great at but also you know don't forget about the things that you do need to do in a business as well so yeah yeah totally I'm more than happy to help if I can help anybody um, out there who's listening if anybody wants um you know you know quick chat or anything you know put me in touch because um yeah I was very grateful of people to talk to when I was starting out and along the journey you never stop learning do you no not at all well listen I you know we're running out of time now so personally I want to thank you all and just to anybody who's um listened in today thanks for joining us but if there's any help you need you know whether it's from myself uh Nick Rachel from the Nat West side you know Claire's just off to help I know Lorna and Jane exactly the same and Earl if it's just for shampoo details you know <laughs> you started the conversation off on this one the hair conversation this morning with men it's been unbelievable um you know please do reach out do never feel that you're stuck and you're not sure who to go to for the help because that's the biggest and there's absolutely stacks of help out there and it's just about knowing where to go and who can help you but I'll hand over to Rachel to close the um session off now thanks Rachel Thanks, Heather. Yeah, and just to echo exactly what you've just said, Heather, big thank you to everyone that's attended today. Um, I know time's precious, especially right now. 
Um, really hope you've been thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, not only that, being inspired by it, especially with Claire's story. Um, I know I was certainly inspired, so thank you for taking the time, Claire, to join. Um, huge thank you to the LEP and to Huddersfield Giants for you know being in collaboration with this event. Um, like I say, it's not about doing everything on your own. It's about working together, um, teamwork, as, as it is in business. It's the same, same with larger organisations as well. So again, if you'd like any further information around the agenda, um, you know, I'd be happy to help. Uh, if you want to follow me on LinkedIn, it's just search Rachel Middleton. Um, Twitter, my Twitter handle is at RachelMid83. Um, and like I said, any support, just, just follow up and that'll be great. Thank you very much.